Hey everyone, this is just a test of my new microphone. I just want to get it set up and see how it works and see how it sounds to you guys before I record any videos with it. I wasn't sure which game to play because this is another USB mic, so I did get a multi USB jack so I can hook up multiple things at once so I can play more games with like my mouse or my controller. So I just decided to go with Doki Doki Literature Club. This isn't actually a game I play a lot, but I decided to screw it. I might as well use something, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me know how the audio sounds. Let me know if something is up. This mic is brand new, so I'm not certain on how good it will be. I'm hoping it's working fine on your guys' end, though. Let, Let me know if something sounds off. Like I said, this is mostly just a test. Sorry if I did this kind of late. Let's see, will this do any better? Is anyone else here tonight or is it just a couple people? I really hope I know what I'm doing. Okay, let me see what that does. I think there's an echo, I hope not. I hope that fixed it. I felt like there was a bit of a, apparently someone said there was a bit of a robot voice. I wasn't sure how true that was. How's it going, guys? This is mostly just a test, however, if you have anything you want to say, feel free to put it in the chat. This is supposed to be the best microphone in the world, so I hope the back of the box didn't lie to me. I've been lied to before. God damn. My knee still hurts like a bitch. Fuck. Hey, how's it going?
I'm hoping, hoping everything, everything sounds good, good on your guys' end. For some reason, the stream, when I first set it up, it lagged for a bit. I don't know what the hell that was all about. Not gonna lie, I would really not like having to play Doki Doki Literature Club because I find this game to be very boring. Not sure why this game blew up. Well, actually, I mean, I do know why. Rather than I agree with that, I don't know. Although I don't really give a shit about the visual novel game, so maybe that's why. I want to make sure this mic is working fine because I'm going to be busy with a lot of videos this month. And I hope I'm not too late on the Christmas special I have planned out. I want to get this new mic as soon as possible. By the way, does anyone know why this Natsuki character always shows up when you search up anime traps? Like, as far as my knowledge, this character isn't a trap. And she's not a lesbian either, like some people have theorized. So, if anyone could explain that to me, that would be great, because I don't get it. Clicking shit because I really don't care. Um,
Okay, well, let's see on that. I honestly have no clue what's next for the Ascension. I mean, I've been following Victor's Twitter, and I don't even think even he knows. I mean, he has other people from different wrestling feds asking him if he wants to wrestle. He's not certain. Someone in my comment section told me he might go back to ROH because that's apparently where he came from. I hope not because ROH is just another garbage fed like WWE and he's not going to be any better off in ROH than he will in WWE. If anything, he probably will just increase his chances of dying in the ring. So, yeah, I don't know. I've been following to see what's going on, but I don't know. It's a really bullshit situation. I'm going to try to record a video for that tomorrow about the Ascension situation. What do you mean by review Sora vs. Link? Are you talking about that video made by Devil Artemis or whatever? The one that has no context, no research or anything? Unless you're referring to Sora vs. Pit, which maybe I could do, but as far as I know, Sora vs. Link hasn't happened except for on Devil's Artemis' channel. But I don't even, I barely even consider that a death battle. I barely even consider it a full animation because it's so freaking short. Unless I'm thinking of something else. I might be thinking of another Link vs. Cloud animation. Oh yeah, I've already mentioned this before, I don't review One Minute Melee, I also don't review DBX, I don't review Death Battle shows that put no research into it because I feel that it's pointless, mindless violence. And if there's no point to it, then why even bother? I personally just see it as a waste of animation. So yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Also, a lot of the decisions they make on those one-minute melees just really piss me off. And I know that there's no other reason for it other than, well, they either flipped a coin or they did it based on some kind of bias or poll rather than actually giving a damn about who would win.
Uh, I gotta get some more games for my computer so I don't have to use freaking games like this. I don't know what people find enjoyable about this. At least Koyakatsu Party has some gameplay. And Kirby vs. Majin Buu, probably because I'm still gonna do the 12 Days of Death where I talk about 12 straight death battles for 12 straight days. Then I'm gonna try to do a remake of my top 10 worst death battles, which it did get brought to my attention. Someone did make a commentary to that. But funny enough, and me and the person kind of laughed this off, he made his commentary around the same time I pretty much disowned that, that original video and said that I no longer consider that video, like, my own, like, thoughts anymore because I'm kind of embarrassed, like, it wasn't very well made. It was around the time I first got my editing software, I was fumbling around, I barely had any freaking clue what I was doing. So, yeah, that was kind of funny, and we both laughed at that in his comment section, because I'm like, oh yeah, don't worry, I don't consider that video, like, my thoughts anymore. It's trash, it was poorly made, I did not convey my thoughts very well. There were so many death battles I should have put on that list, but didn't. Spoilers, I'm putting Yang versus Tifa on there. That fight should have been on there from the very beginning. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, not putting that fight on there. I mean, that one was just so fucking terrible. Hopefully I'll be able to do a better job next time around. I swear to God, if Rooster Teeth tries to block it, I'm going to be pissed because I'm getting sick of Rooster Teeth cracking down on my reviews. Oh, the latest ABGN episode? That was actually pretty shocking, to say the least. I did not expect him to review Majora's Mask. I just didn't think of all Zelda games he would ever go after Majora's Mask. And I can concede some of his points. Majora's Mask can be a very frustrating game. Although I still love Majora's Mask, and it is right up there with Twilight Princess as one of the darkest Zelda games. And I do like it when Legend of Zelda goes dark. I think Legend of Zelda works a lot better as a dark series, rather than trying to be like bright or upbeat like the Mario games, like what they tried to pull with Wind Waker. I mean, I still like Wind Waker, it's one of the best GameCube games, but the cartoon style just didn't really do it for me. When I did see his review of Majora's Mask, I was like, holy shit. It was kind of like when he reviewed Earthbound, I did not expect him to ever review Earthbound. It was a really good episode. And I love how much attention he put on Raid 2020 because I was honestly curious on if he was actually going to remember to review that game when he teased in his very old Christmas episode from back when he had like 20 episodes and he was still the angry Nintendo nerd that he was going to review that game. I guess he really is going to. I really hope Raid 2020 lives up to the hype and ends up being a really shitty game. I mean, it was made by Color Dreams. So, we can only hope it turns out to be absolute shit. Like all the Wisdom Tree games, even though they're just made by Color Dreams. My favorite Zelda game? That's a tricky one, because it really depends on... Like, how I look at it, because the one I played the most was probably Minish Cap. I can't count how many times I've played and beaten that game. I know that game inside and out, pretty much. However, if I have to go with the one I think is the best, it's probably Breath of the Wild. So it all depends on how I look at it. If I had to say my personal favorite, maybe Minish Cap. However, I don't really consider Minish Cap the best one by any means. It's just the one I personally played the most and enjoyed growing up. But Ocarina of Time is also great. I also really enjoy Twilight Princess, and I really, really like Oracle of Ages, so it's really tricky for me to pick. Also, Oracle of Ages has one of my favorite dungeon themes in the entire franchise, the Skull Dungeon theme, which that theme still holds up to this day. For music made for Game Boy Color, 
It is really damn good. I recommend looking that up sometime. You can probably even find it in my playlist if you've ever looked at that. Unless it got removed from YouTube because a lot of my songs that are on my playlist keep getting removed from my freaking uh, playlist and it's getting really irritating. They're either getting blocked, taken down, or just put in private mode for really no reason. I don't get what the point of that is. Well, you probably wouldn't be the only one that's depressed. I ended up getting a second strike for some more bullshit. Sony is still cracking down on my ass. I swear, Sony is always waiting for me to fuck up. I swear Sony is out to get me. If I get one more strike, if I get one more strike, I am fucked. Which is not what I need right now. Even if I am re-uploading all my videos to other sites, unfortunately they're not as populated as YouTube.
Okay, good. It's working fine. Perfect. Well, at least you didn't fuck up your knee today like I did. I ended up smashing it into a concrete divider. It still hurts like a bitch. And of course it had to be my bad knee because that's always the one I hit. I swear I'm gonna end up breaking this thing one of these days. Oh yeah, I do remember that Sora vs. Link one minute melee. Now that I think about it, I did watch it a while back. Although I didn't think much of it because I don't really care about most one minute melees in general. Once they unironically did Guts vs. Kirito, I was done. Like, no one should ever take that seriously. These fucking tsundere's, they are so enraging. Can you stop getting pissed off for two fucking seconds? Jeez, I swear it's like they're on their period 24-7. Yeah, I will try to get around to doing Boo versus Kirby, because I guess apparently that's still a hotly debated death battle. Even though I still claim it's an obvious crock of shit, and DB Z fans sent fucking Boo to his death. Although some say, well, if he had Super Boo, he would have won. I would make a review of this game, except I do not consider Doki Doki Literature Club a game. It's barely worthy to be called a freaking creepypasta game. It's on par with that garbage. But even then, I think that might be insulting to creepypasta games. Because at least they're games. This is barely even a game. I've never understood the appeal of visual novels. I swear, I don't know if I'm exhausted, or it's because this game is putting me to sleep. Ben Drowned is a good creepypasta, but unfortunately, mainstream culture isn't doing much for Ben Drowned. I always say the best video game pasta will always be NES Godzilla. It's genuinely a very well written story. Even if it wasn't a video game pasta, it's still pretty well written.
Like, it's one of the few creepypastas that actually had me on the edge of my seat where I was genuinely concerned for the main protagonist. The way the whole story builds up is just perfect. I might make a review of that creepypasta sometime because it's so good, especially the way Mr. Creepypasta did it. The music and the way he read that creepypasta was just perfect. Some of my favorite lines from a lot of creepypastas are actually from NES Godzilla. Although I do still enjoy Ben Drowned, and I would put it up there as one of the best. Not sure how much longer I'm going to keep this test going. I mean, if everything sounds good on your guys' end, I might cut it off. Since not a lot of people are showing up, and even the ones that are here aren't very active. I don't think I ever read 1999. I know of it, but I don't know if I ever got around to reading it. I do know probably the best creepypasta of all time has to be the Harbinger Experiment. The fact that no one has made a movie on the Harbinger Experiment is beyond me. It would make for a great adaptation if somebody would adapt the damn thing. Someone did try to make an adaptation of the Russian Sleep Experiment, however I think they failed. It was a fan film, but I just, it wasn't really all that good. There were so many things about it that just made me scream, what the fuck. Hell, they made a Harbinger Experiment movie, I'd go see that in theaters. It would be a great movie. Same with Russian Sleep Experiment. Like, since Hollywood is so unoriginal and they just want to adapt other people's shit, you might as well go with something good like the Harbinger Experiment or the Russian Sleep Experiment. Don't waste time trying to make a Jeff the Killer movie because nobody's going to take that seriously. And I'm pretty sure that movie still hasn't seen the light of day and probably never will. I still can't believe I, there was ever at any point in my life where I was ever actually afraid of Jeff the Killer. Jesus Christ. That creepypasta is so fucking bad. I know a lot of people like to say clockwork is worse. I mean, at least they tried to make clockwork an interesting, sympathetic character. With Jeff, there's barely anything there. At least her snap to insanity felt a little bit more realistic. And she at least had reasons that would have pushed her to possibly lose her mind. Outside of dealing with ma bullies.
Man, I really hope you guys can't hear the clicking of my little keypad thing. Because apparently these mics can really pick up sound from even far away. What if I should set this back a little bit? I knew I should have chose Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures to play. God damn, this is so boring. Hopefully my USB multi-jack gets here soon. Ah, Funny Mouth, that was another good one. I don't know, maybe someday I'll make a list of the best creepypastas. And I won't be like the mentally retarded fuckheads over at Watch Mojo that sit here and unironically put Jeff the Killer as the best creepypasta ever. Because it's popular. Please. I swear I hate Watch Mojo so much. I had plans to make a video on them, but I completely forgot to finish editing it. And I don't know if I'm a little bit too late to actually finish the video. Ow, ow. One video I might go after is their top 10 best LGBT characters in anime. Because they put LGBT characters on that list that weren't even technically LGBT characters. So I don't know what Watch Mojo was thinking on that one. I remember I was talking to my best friend who's a huge Persona fan. And when she saw that they put Kanji on the list, she's like, why the hell is Kanji on the list? He's not gay. Like, the character, he, like, the character he's in love with, yeah, it's technically a reverse trap, and he thought it was a boy, but technically the character he's in love with is a girl, so yeah, that kind of cancels that out. Plus, it was never explicitly stated it was gay. The most that happened was he just questioned himself as a man. So, yeah, Watch Mojo never does their due diligence. They just set up a poll like I literally have seen that they just set up a poll I remember one time I came across a poll for watch mojo of who is the worst Pokemon character ever so yeah that's pretty garbage
Oh, I know. One thing that really, really freaking irritated me was when they put, um, I believe it was in their top ten list of the most effed up anime in of the most effed up anime and of course they pick Kodomo no Jiki and imagine my shock I mean I guess I'll give them points for not picking Boku no Pico but Kodomo no Jiki is just as irritating because they couldn't even get basic facts about the anime right they always do that whole BS of saying Kodomo no Jiki is about a seven year old trying to fuck her teacher something that has been debunked countless times and you would know that's not the case if you actually watched the anime or picked up the freaking manga like even freaking misty slash carnexia admitted in one of his videos later on that yeah i over exaggerated kodomo no Jiken. it's not that bad it's actually well written and the main character is not a seven year old trying to fuck his teacher but I still recommend not watching it because it's a lolly anime, and as we know, all lolly anime is pedophilia, so therefore all lolly anime are bad. Unless that lolly anime is about a lesbian or a yandere, or in the case of Happy Sugar Life, a lesbian yandere. So, yeah. Fuck the anime community and its double standards. I swear, it gets so fucking old. Like, I remember that really pissed me off. I remember I mentioned this on my Twitter earlier, but it really irritated me how Anime America did their pretentious ass review of Happy Sugar Life, talking about how amazing it is. And then it's like, wait a second, these are the same motherfuckers that burned Listen To Me Girl, I Am Your Father for being a quote-unquote lolly anime, which it wasn't. Like, they claim, like, oh no, the main character's trying to fuck all these little girls, and oh my god, stay away from the three-year-old, even though there's barely anything sexual in it. Like, they literally said that every step the girls take, their skirt blows up. Um, okay, I actually watched the anime, and that's not true. So why is it that you'll jerk off Happy Sugar Life where a bitch straight up marries a little girl and even kills people for this little girl and apparently got molested by her auntie or mother or whatever the fuck it was, but you'll shit on Listen To Me Girls I Am Your Father, which is literally just a slice of life anime. It's about as innocent and wholesome as it gets. The most you have for an argument is, yeah, the one of the main characters is in love with the cousin character, but it does never go anywhere. So it just ends up being a waste of time. Meanwhile, you'll jerk off Happy Sugar Life because, once again, it's only okay when a lesbian does it. I really want to make a video on this hypocrisy. That was one of the reasons I made the top 10 worst lesbian characters in anime, and I explained this to that furry that tried and failed to respond to me that the main point of that video was to help open a conversation about how nobody ever seems to talk about the negative sides of LGBT and anime, especially in regards to the lesbians, where a lesbian character can be as crazy, psychopathic, or unlikable as possible, and people will still worship them, and even some anime that are considered unacceptable, like lolly anime or something like that, get a free pass just because the main character is a lesbian, which I find to be infuriating. I don't like this double standard. I think it's horseshit. I mean, if you want to like those anime or watch them, I don't really care. That's not really my problem so much with the anime. It's more so with these double standards, and I don't get why. Like, one of the reasons why I like Joey is, for the most part, he doesn't have these double standards. He's not gonna shit on an anime for being, oh, a lolly anime or something. Like, yeah, he'll sometimes freak out, like, in his recent video, where he said, like, um, which anime dudes would you go gay for? And when Pico ended up on there, he's like, ah. I mean, I obviously don't want to go to jail, so we put him at the end. What's kind of sad is Robin used to be one of the better members of Anime America, but she's been going a little bit soft lately. 
I actually got into an argument with Robin one time. At least I think it was Robin, who knows. Could have been some o someone else at Anime America. And of course they decided to hire a couple of SAO tards, because of course they would. I mean, I don't want to have to rip Anime America a new asshole, because I do like their content for the most part, they make good videos. But at the same time, like, they have been going a little bit more full retard lately. Even if she was removed, like, yeah, she's technically the leader, but I feel like even if she was removed or retired, Anime America wouldn't go anywhere. Because just like Death Battle, they have a whole crew at their disposal. I mean, I guess maybe the second best would be Megan, who is okay, I guess. Huh. I just remembered I'm using my old name I used to use, Ratix, on this game. Uh, I haven't used that name in a long time. <laughs> what the fuck? I think she got upset at me because I called her out in her Happy Sugar Life review, and she got all offended about it. She didn't block me, but it was kind of funny to see her flip out. Cause oh my god, that Happy Sugar Life, it, that, that review was trying way too hard. Like seriously, like I, I've seen some pretty pretentious reviews, I mean I actually watched and sat through Nostalgia Critics The Wall, which, should, which is probably one of the worst reviews in the history of anything ever. And Nostalgia Critic should probably shut down his channel for that alone. I will never understand people that block people for having an opinion they don't like. Like I always say, like, the block function should only be used as a last resort. I only use the block function if some motherfucker is threatening my life or stalking me. Sort of. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really play this game. I just pulled this game to have something running in the stream while I test my mic. I don't know if I'll ever make a playthrough or review of this game because one, it's already been spoiled for me, so I already know all the big surprises. And for two, I barely even consider this a game. Maybe someday I'll make a review on this, but again, since I hardly consider it a game, I don't know, like, what I would say, uh, like, what I would classify it as. Like, I, I said earlier that I barely even consider this on par with creepypasta games, but the closest thing I could ever compare Doki Doki Literature Club to is a cringy creepypasta game. And yet people eat this up. Yeah, that's one thing I did. I remember one time I got called a 
stalker by this one moron because his dumb girlfriend kept trying to block me for some moronic reason just because I would call her out on her bullshit and he said you're making another account to show her that she can't block you you're a crazy stalker I'm like no I want to show her because I do this to everyone I want to show them that it's completely pointless to block someone unless you have a really good reason to because they can easily just make another account and follow you which is exactly what I did. And that got me labeled as a stalker, which is really stupid. I remember just a robot called out, I believe it was, I think, Team Moss Boss for doing the same thing. He thinks people who make a second account just to comment on his videos after they block him is a stalker. I'm doing fine, just testing my brand new mic. I didn't expect to get a one of those fancy Blue Yeti mics that I see all the big YouTubers using because I thought it was out of my budget, but I surprised myself and I was able to get my hands on one. I really hope the audio quality of my videos vastly improves because I was always kind of ashamed of some of my older videos because I really, really did not like the audio quality of some of my videos and I'm hoping this microphone will make those problems go away. I have a pretty decent editing software and I've been getting a lot better at editing lately. I just needed a better microphone. Never heard of that visual novel. One thing that's kind of funny if you're ever aware of the infamous hentai shoujo ramane, apparently that was actually based on, an, on a visual novel, which if that's true, that's actually kind of hilarious. Here's one thing I will say, even though I don't like visual novels, I will say this. I don't know if I should like review this I don't- not review this, uh, I don't know if I should, um, reveal this now or not, but me and a partner of mine are actually working on a novel together, and it's going to be done in the visual novel style because I told him I'm actually studying video game programmer, and though I'm not really an expert or anything, I know enough about video game programming and I have a software for it where I could make a visual novel and replicate what the original Fate Stay Night was, for example, so we're working on a novel, and we do have some pretty good ideas. But I don't think I should say too much on it because it's still in the works and I don't know if this is an appropriate time for me to reveal that. But that is something that I have in the works along with three other scripts for different anime. Possibly a fourth script. Me and my best friend earlier were talking about the possibility because I remember the other day I came up with this idea for an anime that I think would be brilliant. Of... What if it was like a generic school romance type anime, but um, every single girl in this all-girls school, in air quotes, was actually a trap, and there's one boy trapped in a school full of traps. <laughs> I think that would actually be pretty entertaining. I used to have a PS4, but thanks to my genius older brother, it got stolen. Now it's gone, along with all my games. And I'm not gonna buy another one because, as I mentioned in a really, really old video, I'm boycotting Sony, and I'm almost certain that's the reason why Sony has been on my ass lately. Because Sony just waits for me to make one wrong step so they can throw a copyright strike on my channel. I swear to God, they're hell-bent on my destruction. Which is really annoying and sad, actually. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm certain Sony is after me. And I refuse to buy any of their products. Like, I have a Switch. I don't care about the pl I don't care about getting another PlayStation 4. I don't care about the PlayStation 5. I really don't. Sony needs to go bankrupt. They've hit rock bottom. 
It was fun while it lasted, Sony, but you're done. <laughs> ah, yes, Darukaku is quite the trap. <laughs> I've been meaning to get around to watching his anime because I still want to watch more trap anime. That's why I've been putting the top 10 best traps on hold because not only do I want to wait until I have a better microphone and uh, get better at editing, but I want to be able to watch more anime with trap characters before I make that list. I mean, I'm sure you and I both know who number one is going to be, but at the same time, I do want to actually take the time to have it be a legit list. However, I'm not sure if I'm going to have any reverse traps on the list. I might make that a list of its own, maybe. Because right off the top of my head, I could easily fill half the list with the top five sisters, as I call them. The big, the big five sisters, but there are definitely more traps out there. And I want to try to give some attention, especially some that may or may not be as mainstream as some of the big girls, in air quotes, that we all know and love. So I do actually have a lot of projects in the works, so I'm going to be pretty swamped lately with new videos. Some I'm going to be more excited to do now that I have a, mi now that I have a better microphone. Hopefully I won't get hit with any more bogus strikes because I really don't want to see my channel go. Though I technically have a backup channel, I really don't feel like putting up with that. Yeah, tomboys and reverse traps, similar to traps and femboys, they're very very close to being the same thing. Well, here's one thing I don't get, and I really want to either make a video or a live stream about this, but I'm really, I really don't understand this double standard of, I even made a meme about this, that Joker meme, um, whenever a girl dresses and acts like a boy, nobody bats an eye, but as soon as a guy dresses like a girl, everyone flips out and starts calling him a faggot. I really don't understand this double standard. And I really want to talk about it because, I mean, all memes aside, it is pretty bullshit and something I don't understand. I mean, I got threatened to get thrown out of my own house just because the person I live with finds the idea of me dressing like a girl to be just such a terrible thing. I really don't get it. But whenever you see a girl dressing and acting like a boy, nobody really gives a shit. I don't understand it. Like, it's one thing if they were transgender, I can understand why that may be hard for some people to handle, but if they're just traps, like, seriously, who the hell cares? Yeah, sure, some people can be cringy, like drag queens, which is why traps don't like to be associated with them. I might cut the stream off soon because my laptop battery is shit. Yeah, being real subtle with these poems, aren't ya? I swear, how do people ever fall for this damn game?
I don't even know if this game can even be considered subversive because I'm pretty sure there are much darker visual novels out there than this game. Hell, Fate Stay Night was a visual novel in that, and in that story, you see a girl get straight up raped. And you see a little girl get fucking brutally killed. Well, I mean, technically she's not a little girl. She looks like a lolly, but she's actually 18, but still. I mean, I would argue Fate Stay Night is much darker than frickin' Doki Doki Literature Club. That's something I don't like about Doki Doki Literature Club. It tries way too hard to be edgy. Like, being edgy is not the problem, but when you try way too hard to be edgy, it just doesn't work. It just comes off as hilarious. Yeah, I would love to be able to do a lolly voice, but I can't. I'm unfortunately pretty bad at changing the pitch of my voice to sound more feminine. I have had people tell me that I have the perfect balance of a feminine and masculine voice. Which I guess is fine and all, but I personally am not the biggest fan of my voice. My best friend told me earlier that... She said that I sound like a girl trying to sound like a boy. I'm not sure if that's true, but I would much rather have a more feminine, high-pitched voice. Like, I would want to sound like, say, Mei Misaki or something like that. That's the type of voice I'd really like to have, but I'm so terrible at changing my voice. such a shit battery life always gets on my freaking nerves I swear I wish I had a desktop sometimes those things are always far too expensive maybe someday I'll get myself one of those fancy gaming PCs but I don't know If the audio is sounding good to you guys, then I guess I would consider this test successful. Oh sure, I'll take a look at that. I did check my notifications before I pulled up the live stream. I didn't see your comment unless it ended up in my spam folder, which I really hate it when YouTube puts comments in my spam folder for no reason. Especially when it's not spam, I don't know why the hell YouTube does that. But yeah, I'll take a look about look at it. Surprisingly, that, that rant video turned out to be way more successful than I thought it would be. It was one of my first videos that blew up. And the second video I made that blew up was my um, trap theme song video that I uploaded, which was one of the videos that motivated me and showed me that, okay, so there is a market for trap content. And then I made my top 10, not top 10, ugh, I made my, um, volume one of trap memes, which really blew up. It has over 14,000 views. Although a lot of the other volumes haven't gotten as much attention and the recent ones haven't been getting very many views so I might stop making those trap meme compilations because they don't seem to be getting the views that they used to. 
And it's not necessarily that I'm saying like I want to stop because oh they're not getting views and I'm not getting ad revenue because for one it's not like I'm getting paid anyway and for two when I see a video with low views and not many comments that tells me that you aren't interested in that video so I end up moving on to other videos and it seems like people are losing interest in the trap memes compilation so I'm probably going to stop. I think I might make one more big final compilation called the Trap Me Movie, and then I might put an end to it. Yeah, someone else earlier in the stream mentioned that it did sound a little bit robotic-y. However, I'm not going to lie, I'm new to this microphone. I've never used a microphone like this before. I'm not certain what would be causing it to sound robotic-y. That's why I wanted to do this test stream to kind of get the feel for it. I'm not sure what's causing it, to be honest. I think it might have been, maybe it could have been the distance of the mic. I mean, I wasn't sure how far I should have the mic be because apparently these mics are very sensitive and can pick up sound from very, very far away. There's literally an option on my mic that I can switch to where it'll pretty much pick up noise from the entire area. Which obviously I don't want. So I'm still getting used to this thing. That's why I want to get used to how this microphone works before I start using it for any official videos. Because part of the reason why I got this microphone was because I wanted to put an end to all my crummy audio issues, not make them worse, because I don't want this microphone to be a waste of money. I spent over $100 on this damn thing, and with how many big YouTubers use these things, and how it says on the back of the box, it's the number one microphone in the world, I expect this thing to be damn good and to never have to buy another microphone ever again. I mean, I am emotionless like a robot, I guess. Ah, god damn it. Yeah, I think it might just have something to do with the distance, because from what I can hear, my voice does seem to be a little bit better than how it was earlier. Earlier, the robotness was really, really bad. So maybe it's just because I'm breaking the mic in. Maybe it's getting used to my laptop. Or maybe it was just because I was a little bit too far away from the mic, that could be it. I might also download the app. It does mention in the instruction manual, download the app to get the most out of your Blue Yeti. I guess I'll look into that, maybe see if that'll do anything. God fucking damn it. Fuck. My fucking knee. God damn it. Yeah, like I said, if something's up with the audio, just let me know. That's the point of this test. I want to make sure everything is working fine. I mean, I don't usually mention this, but I'm actually extremely insecure about what you all think of my videos because I believe that you all deserve the best videos possible, and if I'm putting out subpar videos, then I see that as a failure. So, I'm actually very, very insecure about what you all think of me. Though I try to put on a strong face and give an I don't care mentality, but in actuality, I actually do care a lot. Which is why I usually tell people, please let me know what you think about my videos in the comment section. Your criticism does matter to me. I'm not one of those YouTubers that's going to throw a shit fit because, oh no, he or she threw criticism my way. Recently, I got praise from another YouTuber who said I was such a good sport when he made his response video to my top 10 worst death battles. I said, yeah, I no longer consider my views on that video valid. I pretty much disowned it. I'm going to be making a remake of it. The only reason I haven't deleted it is because I do stand by some of the sentiments in the video. Also, it did get a lot of views, so I will keep it up, if not just so people don't get the wrong idea. I know sometimes when YouTubers delete videos, people sometimes get the wrong idea of why they deleted the video. 
Oh yeah, you just showed up here. What happened was, was when I went shopping for my microphone, I had a little accident and I accidentally slammed my knee um, against one of those uh, concrete dividers. And now my knee is a little bit fucked up. It's not broken or sprained as far as my knowledge, but it just really, really hurts to walk on. So it hurts really, really badly. I took some aspirin, but that didn't do shit. And people wonder why I don't like to go outside. I am not a freaking outside person. Kind of like Spongebob in that one episode. I'd much rather stay inside where it's safe. And at least in my own house, the most I have to worry about is accidentally stubbing my toe every once in a while. Like, every time I've almost slipped in my house, it's never happened. But, the, but I finally go outside after a few weeks and I immediately end up hitting my knee against a concrete divider. Would it be too much to ask to actually show some animation of her arms actually wrapped around the character? This is why I fucking hate visual novels. They aren't actually visual, it's just a bunch of fucking static images moving around every once in a while. Sephiroth vs. Virgil, that's one I hear a lot about because apparently people think that Virgil got fucked in that death battle and they point to how in the recent manga apparently both Dante and, and Virgil are now universe level. I'm not certain how true that is, but even if Dante is universe level, he would still most likely lose to Sephiroth. His mind manipulation will still most likely fuck with him. Sephiroth is still too fast for Virgil. And even if he is universe level, well guess what? Sephiroth has gone up against multiversal level beings. The Final Fantasy universe is not a joke, and I really hate these people that think that the Final Fantasy universe is a chicken shit universe. No, the Final Fantasy universe is not a universe you want to fuck with. The characters in that universe will fucking tear your heart out of your fucking ass and show it to you. Like, there are some people that say Virgil is universe level and Sephiroth is only solar system level, so therefore, Virgil should win. Well, correction, it's not really so much so that Sephiroth is solar system level. One of his attacks, Supernova, is solar system level. However, it also depends on how you interpret it. I mean, you could possibly argue that the supernova is universe level. However, most only put it at solar system level. Even if that was the case, that's just the supernova. That's not even all of Sephiroth's attacks. And like I said, he's gone up against multiversal level threats in Dissidia. So if you want to count Dissidia, which is technically canon, yeah, Virgil is still fucked. Um, if I remember correctly, there has been parts of the video game where Virgil has fallen to mental manipulation. So my question would be, what's your response to that? Because apparently there have been parts of the games where Virgil has been mentally manipulated before. So what would be your response to that? Uh, 
And again, even if the mental manipulation didn't work, it's it's kind of like Sosuke Aizen from Bleach. Even if you don't manage to fall under the influence of Kyoka Suigetsu, trust me, Kyoka Suigetsu is the least of your worries. Aizen is still going to kick your ass with or without it. It's kind of the same with Sephiroth. Even if somehow your ride in Virgil wouldn't fall to Sephiroth's mental manipulation, it won't matter because Sephiroth is still going to tear him apart regardless. So again, I'm, I'm really failing to understand what the Devil May Cry fans are trying to get at here. Like, I know Death Battle isn't exactly the best at scaling these characters, but trust me. Sephiroth can be scaled to a multiversal level threat at the least. So I think it's safe to assume universe level or not, Virgil would still most likely lose. I mean, I'll look a little deeper into it. I mean, if people want me to talk about, if people want uh, if people still feel that strongly about Sephiroth versus Virgil, I'll add it to my list for the 12 Days of Death battle. I'll look a little deeper into it, but I personally didn't have a problem with Virgil versus Sephiroth. Though I will admit, it's possible that they didn't scale Sephiroth and Virgil properly. Because if we are going to look at how powerful these characters actually are, it's far more likely that they should have scaled Sephiroth to multiversal and um, Virgil to universe level. I will give you guys that, but in terms of the actual death battle itself, rather you agree with the results or not, it's one of their better death battles. So I usually leave it alone because it actually is a good fight. My only problem with it was I kind of had one problem with it. They didn't use the one winged angel. Well, okay, they did use it, but for like five seconds towards the end. They should have had the one winged angel theme playing throughout more of the fight. Like, that song is iconic to Sephiroth. To not use it is completely asinine. Even fucking Kingdom Hearts used the one winged angel theme. So, yeah, and don't give me this bullshit that you can't use it because my copyright or something like that. They could have used it. Um, that's not true. If I remember correctly, Sephiroth did use the supernova attack in Dissidia. So, I could be wrong because I haven't actually played Dissidia. I've always wanted to play Dissidia, but I've never gotten the chance to because when I had my PlayStation Portable, I was never able to get a copy of Dissidia. The closest I've played is that really crappy phone game. So, but if I remember correctly, I do believe Sephiroth has used the supernova outside of his safer form. It's most likely that it was only like at that point in time in Final Fantasy VII, but over time Sephiroth became stronger and learned how to use supernova without being in his safer form. Because remember, Sephiroth did come back to life many times after Final Fantasy VII. You had Advent Children, you had Dissidia, Hell, you even had Kingdom Hearts. And believe it or not, Kingdom Hearts is actually a part of the Final Fantasy universe. A lot of people don't know that. Kingdom Hearts is canon. So that version of Sephiroth that's in Kingdom Hearts that fought Sora, yeah, that's canon. So keep in mind, Sephiroth did fight Sora, and that is canon. So please keep that in mind. Sephiroth does absolutely scale to Sora. One of the only forms of Sora that absolutely obliterates Sephiroth that he cannot handle is Sora's anti-form. But if I remember correctly, Sora's anti-form is absolutely busted. It's one of his most powerful forms. So it makes sense that the anti-form would be capable of completely destroying Sephiroth. So, yeah, please keep that in mind the next time you try to say that, well, Sephiroth is only this. And again, just because 
only the supernova is solar system level doesn't inherently mean that Sephiroth himself is solar system level. Because he has gained more power over the years. And you do have to take a look at Dissidia where he has fought some very powerful Final Fantasy characters and has gone up against very powerful Final Fantasy villains like X-Death who did have the power of the Void and was a multiversal threat as well as being a casual universe buster. And that's just X-Death. X-Death was a casual universe buster. I say it depends on if you consider the Kingdom Hearts version of Sephiroth to be a separate version of Sephiroth from the Final Fantasy VII one. And remember, Advent Children does exist and is a canon sequel to Final Fantasy VII, so you can't ignore Advent Children. And I do believe there's also Dirge of Cerberus, however, I don't think Sephiroth is in Dirge of Cerberus, so I guess I'll leave that one alone. But yeah, it all depends on how you look at it. Personally, I say that Kingdom Hearts Sephiroth is the same as the Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, and he's absolutely fair game. Because it's not like the Kingdom Hearts universe is an alternate universe version of him. He's still the same Sephiroth, and Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy does take place in the same universe. And I say it all depends, like, how do you scale Sora? If we say that Sephiroth does scale to Sora, then would you say that Sora is capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Virgil? And we all know how overpowered Sora is. Sora ain't no joke. And like I said, the only form that Sora has that Sephiroth absolutely does not scale to is his broken-ass anti-form. That's the only one Sephiroth legitimately can't handle. Outside of that, Sephiroth can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sora, and in some cases, Sephiroth can absolutely beat the shit out of Sora. And keep in mind, this is just with his one wing and angel form. Which, as we know, his one wing and angel form is not even his full power. So if he scales to Sora with just his one wing and angel form, keep in mind that's not even his full power. Like I said, I'll look a little deeper into this because apparently the, a new Devil May Cry game has come out along with a new manga, so I guess it's fair to take another look at it. However, I'm still certain that Sephiroth would most likely win, but I feel like even with the results aside, the fight itself was good. So I guess it all depends on how you look at it. Some people judge Death Battle based purely on the results. See, the difference is, here's what I think people don't necessarily understand about my reviews. I don't criticize Death Battle based solely on who wins, like most people do. I based it on all the factors. The analysis, the results, the fight, the animation, the music, how both universes are represented and respected. And I'm sorry, but even if you disagree with the results, and even if Virgil should have won... The fight, itself, the fight itself was still well made. They did respect both characters, for the most part. Like, the most you could give them is that, yeah, the results were shit. But the results being shit doesn't necessarily make or break a death battle. I mean, part of the reason why... Um, Tifa versus Yang was so much more offensive is it wasn't just because they said Tifa loses. No, it was just the amount of disrespect they had towards Tifa, how badly they lowballed her, 
all the bullshit advertisement and whoring out of fucking Ruby, the fact that even Death Battle's own crew was telling them you're wrong, making up their own bullshit math, and even their own bullshit math debunks them. I, I have a video explaining all the problems with Yang versus Tifa. That one, I feel, is so much more worse. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but Sephiroth versus Virgil, even if the results are wrong, is nothing compared to how they treated Tifa. So I'm sorry, but in terms of, like, bad Final Fantasy death battles, Sora versus Link, Sephiroth versus Virgil, they don't compare to Yang versus Tifa in terms of being bad, I'm sorry. You can, you can look at Cloud vs. Link and Sephiroth vs. Virgil and find some redeemable qualities. Yang vs. Tifa is completely irredeemable. And I think that Death Battle does owe the Final Fantasy fanbase an apology, and they should absolutely remake that Death Battle with the proper results, except the difference here is Yang should be one-shot. Because Yang would be one-shot by any of Tifa's limit breaks. Yeah, it is true that Yang can technically tank Tifa's normal attacks, but that's just her normal attacks. Anything outside of her normal attacks one-shots Yang. Well, again, I admit, I don't really know too much about Devil May Cry, so I'm not able to speak too much on Virgil as a character. That's why I'd probably have to do a little bit of research on it. Maybe I'll make both a review and possibly a full debunking later down the line, because I do both debunkings and reviews. So, if it truly is wrong, then I'll make a debunking of it. However, I haven't seen anyone making any debunkings of Sephiroth vs. Virgil. Like, as, like, at least debunking videos. Like, I've seen people in, um, Death Battle and Versus communities talking about it, but outside of that, that's about it. So I assume it was only just the Devil May Cry fans that had a problem with it, and of course the Devil May Cry fans are going to be upset about it. No matter what, the fans are always going to be pissed no matter what, because they don't want to see their favorite character die. That's always how it's going to be. So that's why I don't always take fan backlash into account. No, people want me to do the top 10 best death battles, and I do plan on doing that at some point. I just don't know when. I just wanted to give Death Battle maybe one more season to try to redeem themselves. But it doesn't look like Death Battle is going to redeem themselves anytime soon. So if I am going to retire like I did tease, I will do the top 10 best and worst death battles before I retire from death battle permanently, if I decide to do so. I still don't know if I'm going to retire or not. Because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for death battle, my channel would have gone nowhere. Part of the reason why my channel ended up going places was I did get a reputation in the versus community as being that guy that tears death battle a new asshole. And even though some of my older videos weren't exactly the best, I do admit that there are some of my older videos I'm not too proud of. I have gotten better over the years, and I do acknowledge that someone does need to keep Death Battle in check. And it does seem that maybe some of my criticisms might be getting through Death Battle, because it does seem like they have been making changes in the areas that I have been consistently bitching about. You could say it's a coincidence. I'm not sure it is a coincidence. Maybe I'm finally getting through the Death Battle. And if they are slowly getting better, even if it is slowly, then maybe similar to the AVGN when he teased retirement, maybe I should stick around with Death Battle and continue to call them out until they eventually get their shit together. But if I do choose to retire, I will do the top 10 best Death Battles before I go. But I still need to think about it. I don't know when I'm going to come to that conclusion because after Big Head versus Deadpool, I'm just completely disgusted with Death Battle right now. I don't even want to review their next de Death Battle, All Might versus Guy Sensei. I'm just, I don't care. Oof. 
Oh, favorite anime OP? I actually have a top 10 list for that. It did get blocked, but I did manage to win the bullshit copyright claim and get it unblocked. So, what I would say, Super Boyo, is check out my list of the top 10 best anime openings. It is one of my older videos, but I still stand by it. The only thing that kind of sucked about it was the audio wasn't the best. Outside of that, I think it's a pretty good list. And my favorite anime OP of all time is what's number one on that list. Not because it's my favorite, but because it's probably the best anime opening point blank period. Yeah, I know that's somewhat awkward subscribing to someone who's infamous in the Versus community for tearing death battle apart and then they're teasing retirement. I mean, I'm only teasing retirement. I'm not certain if I'm going to go through with it. I said what I wanted to do was I'm going to do the 12 days of death where I will do 12 death battle reviews and then I'm going to remake the top 10 worst death battles and then I'm going to take a little bit of a break from death battle and decide if I want to stop doing reviews or not because I'm just so burned out dealing with death battle. If you've seen some of my recent death battle reviews, I've been slowly becoming more and more apathetic and it's becoming harder and harder for me to talk about them because a lot of people sometimes give me shit for repeating the same points over and over and over again and I keep saying well when death battle makes the same mistakes over and over and over again I'm going to end up repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again and how many times can I just repeat the same criticisms towards death battle so I would say don't get your hopes up I'm not setting in stone that I'm retiring just putting it out there as a possibility that I'm considering it. I think depending on the success of the 12 Days of Death, which I will be getting started on real soon, and the top 10 worst death battles, depending on how that goes, the remake of it, that might determine whether or not I stick around or not. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm... I'm... Not sure if it's because I'm too far or too close to the mic or not. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this thing. It is a little bit different from my headset mic. Yeah, I mean, I will be honest. If it is truly what my fans want, if they really want me to continue reviewing Death Battle, I will do it because at the end of the day... I do what I do for you guys. I'm here to entertain you guys. And if you still want me to review Death Battle, I'll absolutely do it. But if the videos don't get like a whole lot of attention, then I might stop doing it because it tells to me that fans are possibly getting sick and tired of it. I mean, it's not that I necessarily want to retire from Death Battle, but at the same time, I'm just, I'm slowly getting more and more burned out. And if you watch my ma my Big Head versus Deadpool Death Battle, that one was really the straw that broke the camel's back for me. It was so bad, I honestly think it's worse than Naruto versus Ichigo, one of the most infamously bad Death Battles ever made. I mean, I didn't think it was possible for Death Battle to sink lower than Naruto vs. Ichigo. I, had have, I have had some people tell me that no, they still think that Naruto vs. Ichigo is worse than Big Head vs. Deadpool. I mean, I might think about it when I do the remake for the top 10 worst death battles. That's why I'm reviewing it. Naruto vs. Ichigo might still be the worst, but I don't know... Big Head vs. Deadpool was really, really bad. It, it was such a freaking missed opportunity, and it was a nightmare. It, it, it defied the already low expectations I had, and I had very little expectations for it. Um, I guess it all really depends. I mean, even though my 
intro was pretty well made. Sadly, a lot of people criticized me for using that intro, saying that it was too long. Although they fail to understand that that was kind of the point. It was meant to be a more um, somber kind of opening to kind of reflect like who I am as a person and like what my channel is about. So, I don't know. I mean, what I would say is maybe practice making some AMVs before you work on an opening, but it also depends on the type of opening you want to make. See, my opening was meant to actually imitate anime openings, and I feel a lot of people really missed the point of my opening that it was supposed to feel like an anime opening. And yeah, I get that anime openings are often criticized for being long. I would say you should, you would probably need at least some novice editing skills. Because if you're a complete noob, then you might not do a very good job. I don't even use the intro anymore. I stopped using that a long time ago. I instead traded it in for a fully 3D animated outro featuring my OC character that I created, which a lot of people seem to prefer the outro over the intro. They seem to enjoy it. So I use an outro now. I don't use the opening anymore. I've thought about making a brand new opening, maybe one that people would enjoy, but I don't think I'm going to do so. Because whenever I do an opening people end up hating it. So I'm probably not going to make any more openings. I don't even think I'm going to try to do another big epic opening like I did the first time I did the top 10 worst death battles to make it feel kind of big. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to cut straight to the chase and just talk about why these 10 death battles suck. And if people are skipping the intro, then I guess like there's no point for me to have an intro and people already criticize me for having long videos. However, I finally figured out the reason why my videos are so long. If you ever wondered why some of my videos are long, sometimes it's because I have a lot to say, like the um, video I made of poly, like that polyamory video I made where I made a response video to those two fur fags that made a really intellectually dishonest video about polyamory showing they have no clue what they're talking about. I had a lot to say and that's why it was so long. But I recently discovered that due to my depression, my depression makes me talk slow. Which, because of that, is why my videos end up being kind of long. So I'm hoping I can learn how to fight my depression enough to be able to talk at a faster pace. Because I am absolutely capable of talking fast, my depression just makes it difficult. I try my best to hide it to the best of my ability, but just like our... Friend Dishonored Wolf, who I recently uploaded a video about his story about depression. I felt I owed it to him to help spread awareness because I suffer from the same type of depression he suffers from. Clinical depression. I try my best to hide it, but I do have a really bad case of clinical depression. But I'm going to try my best to get better with voiceovers and to try to talk at a faster pace. Some of my fans don't really mind the longer videos, but some really complain about it. In both of my res my response videos that I got, they complained about my video being too long. I mean, I acknowledge that long videos are not really a good point, however, people are going to make that point regardless, although I pointed out in my response video to that furry that made a response to me, why it's hypocritical to call out long videos. Just check out my response video to that furry if you want to see, like, me take on that point of long videos.
One thing that was kind of funny, apparently, according to that furry that responded to me, all my fans are white knights because some of you dared to go to his comment section and disagree with him. So I guess apparently you're all white knights. No joke, he actually said that. And I kind of called him out for it. Like, I'm getting sick of you calling me lazy, and I'm getting sick of you calling my fans white knights just because they disagree with you. Ah, that's awesome. Honestly, I wish more people would make response videos to me. I'm surprised that I... I mean, I have some pretty controversial opinions, and I've straight up called out certain fan bases and told them to come at me. Like, I can't count how many times I've given the Attack on Titan fan base a reason to come after me, and they never do. I'm surprised more people don't make response videos to me. I really thought, given how many controversial opinions I've had, I would be getting swarmed with people, but it just doesn't happen. Lol. Now, 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 you can't call them Black Knights, though, because that's offensive to knights like Lancelot from Fate. We can't call them Black Knights. That's offensive. We have to call them Berserkers. <laughs> I really hope that joke came out well. Like, I admit I'm sometimes not the best at coming up with jokes right off the top of my head. I do try my best, though. But yeah, either way, that, that furry just keeps constantly digging himself a hole, and I hope he knows I'm coming back for his ass in round two because he decided to have the balls to watch my video after I called him out on Twitter, realizing how fucked he was. He decided to respond to the rest of my video in a fucking Twitter thread, which I am going to make another response video to based on that Twitter thread where I'll destroy the rest of his points. Which are equally as bad, by the way. So, yeah, that furry better be ready because I'm coming for his ass for round two. Like, I would have been willing to leave, to leave him alone, but he keeps calling me lazy. And now he's attacking my fans. It's like, okay, he's just asking for it at this point. Oh, I absolutely love seeing other people's opinions. See, contrary to popular belief, people think that I don't like hearing opinions I don't like because I'm very strong with my beliefs. However, I actually go out of my way to seek um, opinions that are not my own. Like, I remember one time a YouTuber who I plan on making a Never Go Full Retard episode on, uh, DXFan619, he accused me of living in an echo chamber. Even though I go out of my way to find opinions that are not my own, I literally dive headfirst into other people's echo chambers knowing they're going to disagree with me. I'd much rather have someone disagree with me and challenge my opinion and beliefs rather than someone who's just going to blindly agree with me. Do I like having people that agree with me and support my beliefs? Sure. But I, I, I find it annoying when people just blindly agree with me. It actually annoys me. I just want to scream, can you stop jerking me off for five seconds and have your own thought? Thank you. Oh boy, Seth the Programmer. I actually have quite the personal story about that motherfucker. Because I actually went into that guy's Discord. Let's just say I really regret ever doing that. Set the Programmer is quite the asshole. Like, that whole thing is not just a persona. Set the Programmer is actually an arrogant asshole in real life. Like, make no mistake, that's not a persona he puts on. It's not a character. That's actually who he is. Like, I admit that, um, for the most part, in most of my videos, like, especially my rant videos... Most of those reactions are admittedly hyperbolic, and I am playing somewhat of a character. Sometimes I over-exaggerate my emotionlessness. Sometimes I over-exaggerate my anger, ABGN style, because people admit that it makes my videos more entertaining. But with Seth the Programmer, all that shit is legit. He is not putting on a character. He is a legitimate asshole.
Huh, that's kind of interesting. I, I don't know how, like, molar videos would have eventually brought you to me. I'm trying to think of why that would happen. I mean, I know me and Molar do have one thing in common. We both make long-ass videos. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what that is. I can't even pronounce what you just asked me about. Granandria. I can't even pronounce that. I'm not even sure I even know what that is. Believe it or not, I've actually been trying to get on Muller's, um, live stream EFAP. I've been begging him to have me on as a guest, but I've had no luck so far. But I have been trying to get Muller Senpai's uh, attention, but so far, no luck. But I would like to join his podcast sometime, if it's possible, but I think I might be too tiny, I don't know. But I do respect Muller, he makes really great videos. The reason why I never made a video on The Last Jedi is because Muller did exactly what I was going to do. I was going to do a full-on critique just ripping The Last Jedi to shreds and he beat me to it. I'm like, damn it Muller, you son of a bitch, you beat me to it. However, he hasn't done the same thing to Endgame, and I have plans to make a long-ass Muller-style video ripping Endgame to shreds. So that's gonna happen, unless Muller beats me to it, but I don't think he's going to. Because I don't think Muller has the same opinion on Endgame that I do. I think Endgame is an absolute disappointment, and I consider it a failure. Grade A, under A... I don't have many opinions on him. I mean, I liked his vi I liked his video on reaction channels because I really fucking hate reaction channels and reaction videos. I'll never do a fucking reaction video because I think those things are fucking garbage. Even if I ever did do a face reveal, you will never catch me dead making a fucking reaction video. Those videos are fucking trash. Every time someone tries to call out Muller, they do a shit job. I remember DX tried to say that Muller was shit because he thinks things are objective. Apparently, DX thinks that everything is someone's subjective opinion. Which I think is stupid. But yeah, he tried to go after Muller. I told him, yeah, fair warning Muller, DXFan619, he tried to call you out. But if Muller isn't going to go after DX, I'll most certainly deal with him because I actually really got into it with DX. He was so disrespectful and so immature, I actually unsubbed to the guy. You have to really push me to make me want to unsub to your channel. But yeah, I would like to do like more like long critique style videos like Muller, especially in regards to certain anime like Sword Art Online. I really want to tear Sword Art Online a new asshole. I hate that anime so much and I genuinely believe it's one of the worst anime ever created. It's complete horseshit and the fact that anyone considers it even a decent anime is absolutely sacrilegious and a blight upon the entire anime industry. Reki Kawahara is nothing short of a fucking hack. He is utterly incompetent. Oh, I know. What I do is response videos. I love response videos. I think response videos are great. What I hate is reaction videos. The videos where they just do a little reaction, have their screen in the corner while they watch something popular. I hate that shit. Response videos, I love. I do response videos myself. I've made response videos to Anita Sarkeesian, Riley Dennis, Mag, who no longer exists because she got her channel deleted because she's an idiot. I've made response videos to that furry that really tried to make a response video to me and failed. I've done a response video to a wannabe gamer girl. I have nothing against response videos. It's reaction videos I hate because they're so fucking lazy. 
and reaction channels are some of the absolute worst. Like Rache the Reactor, Jinx, Tyrone Magnus, they fucking suck. The only YouTubers that are beneath those guys are people like uh, DC Warrior Comic Zones, who is probably the bottom of the barrel in terms of YouTubers. That dude is so incompetent, that dude can't even do a reaction video correctly. Your Serena video? Oh yeah, sure. I haven't forgotten about that video. I just haven't been able to get around to it because I have so many videos I need to make. I'm gonna try to get around to doing that because I do disagree with your opinions on Serena wholeheartedly Serena is a irredeemable character like she's so bad like I plan on making a video called how to fix Serena where I try really really hard to take Serena and try to fix her up into something halfway decent but Serena is a really terrible character she really is the worst Pokemon character of all time that's not just my thing most of the Pokemon fan base, outside of Serena's tiny little fandom, they hate her. Anytime there was a top 10 list of like the worst Pokemon characters, whenever fans would get involved, they would always say Serena. She really is a god-awful character. She really is the worst. That's no exaggeration. Like, she's so bad, she managed to dethrone Ash Ketchum, someone who has been hated for decades. So yeah, make no mistake, Serena truly is the worst character. Serena is so bad of a character, I didn't add her to my collection in Koyakatsu Party. Like, I have a shit ton of, of Pokemon characters in my collection, but I didn't get Serena. Because Serena is so bad, I don't even want her in my collection. Like, I thought about possibly, because I have teased wanting to do Koyakatsu live streams because I think I could get a lot of entertainment out of that, out of such a live stream. But I want to wait to do it. But I thought about possibly doing a classroom full of Pokemon characters, because why not? The only thing that might stop me from doing so is I don't want people getting the wrong idea from any of my um, Koyakatsu Party live streams. Because I swear if someone calls me a pedophile because I have one character in there that they could even slightly perceive as an underage character, I'm going to be really fucking pissed. There's been so many projects I've had to cancel just because they involve characters that could be even slightly perceived as underage. And I do not want people to try to drag my reputation through the dirt and turn me into a social outcast just because of an opinion I have or just because I make a live stream for fun where I play Koyakatsu Party and oh my god he has Pokemon characters in there. If you don't know what Koyakatsu Party is it's a pretty cool game. It's a game that popped up on Steam. It's made by the company Illusion. They make adult pornographic games, and Koyakatsu Party is one of them. It's an anime-themed hentai game. And it's actually really, really fun. And I have posted um, screenshots of some of the crazy shit I've seen in that game. After seeing all the crazy shit I've seen in Koyakatsu Party... I want to make live streams of it so badly so you all can experience the craziness with me. It is massively entertaining. Koyakatsu Party is a really great game. If you ever have a PC, look into Koyakatsu Party. It's actually a pretty fun game and it actually has a pretty cool character creator too. And it has a pretty dedicated community. There are some really well made characters on the community thing. I don't know when I'm going to do the Koyakatsu live streams though. I don't know if I'm going to do it for just Patreon supporters or not. Because I do hope that people start donating to my Patreon soon. So I can have money to actually put into making better YouTube comment, YouTube content. 
but um, I don't know because I feel like it might be unfair for only people who donate to my Patreon to see the Koyakatsu live streams. I feel like that might be a little bit unfair to some of my subscribers that would probably love to see those live streams but can't afford it. Because coming from the perspective of someone who's very, very poor, I really understand how, how much it can suck to not being able to do certain things or watch certain things just because you don't have the money for it. And I don't want to alienate any of my fans from enjoying my content just because they're not able to give me money. I do feel that's a little bit unfair. But at the same time, I want to try to give my fans a reason to want to support my Patreon. Because I really do have really big plans for content I would love to be able to create. I've even kicked around the possibility of wanting to create fan films like what uh, Star Wars Theory did when he made that amazing Vader fan, Vader fan film. I would love to be able to do something like that, but obviously something like that is going to cost a lot of money. Oh yeah, I do have a My Anime List account. If you want, I'll leave a link to that. If you want to check it out, I actually do have an an My Anime List account, and I have told people if you are interested... And some of my thoughts on anime, there is my anime list. In fact, maybe I'll get a... I have... If you watch my 600 uh, subscriber special live stream, um, the person who's new here, I did actually um, pull up my uh, anime list account. Because I do want to be able to get around to doing anime reviews at some point, but I haven't gotten a chance to get around to doing it yet. Like, I have had plans to do, like, Baka and Test review for the longest time, but I haven't gotten around to doing it. Wake me up when September ends. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Unless you're talking about that Evanescence song. But if you're talking about that Evanescence song, it is called Wake Me Up, but it's not called Wake Me Up Until September, unless you're talking about something else. So I, unless you're talking about something else, the only thing I could think of is that Evanescence song. I really wish I had my multi-jack right now so I could use my mouse. I don't know why my laptop only has one USB port. That is so obnoxious. Ah, Green Day. Yeah, I barely listen to Green Day. The only Green Day song I'm familiar with is American Idiot. That's it. I'm not very familiar with Green Day. So no, I've never heard of that song. I'd probably have to look it up. Good God, this game is so fucking repetitive. Jesus. I am never going to live stream this game again. Jesus Christ. Shit, this is boring.
Eh, somewhat. There are some anime that are missing from that list, or I haven't finished yet. It's been a while since I've updated it. I've been meaning to get around to watching more anime, but I always get caught up in other things. You could possibly call me a novice, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Because I am very knowledgeable in anime. And I have seen over a hundred anime, it's just that there's some anime that I have seen that I have either forgotten the name of it, or I have forgotten to update my anime list. So there are some anime that I have seen that are missing from that list. Have I ever cried at an anime? Uh, kind of. There have been two anime that made me tear up. Naruto, when Kimimaro died, but that's because I cared about Kimimaro as a character and his death was very tragic. And, um, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, when, spoiler, uh, Ilya gets killed by Gilgamesh. That actually had me tearing up. I don't know if I would say I cried, but I did tear up when she got killed. But I don't know if I've ever, like, full-on cried at an anime, if I'm being honest. Only ever teared up. And in regards to movies, the only movie that I recall has that... The only movies that have ever made me cry is Star Wars Episode Three and Marley and Me. But you could argue Marley and Me is kind of cheating. But I did actually cry when I saw Revenge of the Sith. The execute, the Order 66 scene made me tear up, and the scene where Obi-Wan finally broke down emotionally to Anakin made me straight up cry. Yeah, there's a chance you may have seen more anime than me, but like I said, there are some anime that are missing from that list. I just need to either remember their name or update the list. There have been some anime that I have seen and just completely forgotten about. Although there are some anime on that list I wish were not on there. But they are. Yeah, I'll take a look at yours. If you send me a friend request on there, I'll absolutely take a look at yours. Like I said, I do want to get around to watching more anime. Like, I really want to watch uh, Maid Sama. My best friend has been watching it, and it sounds really, really good. I'm also going to try to get around to doing anime reviews, so that way people can start sending me requests for anime to review. And then I can watch even more. Because I'll pretty much watch any anime if it at least intrigues me. Even if it's a genre I'm not really a big fan of. Like, I'm not going to lie, I fucking hate the slice of life genre. I find it so boring. I don't like Yuri anime or, Shon or Shoujo eye anime. I think they're all fucking boring garbage. And I do one day want to make a list of anime that I like and everyone else seems to hate, and then another list of anime everyone else seems to like but I hate, but I need to see if I have enough anime to put on that list. 
because it's very difficult to determine, well, what qualifies as an anime that I like, but everyone else seems to hate. Or an an- I mean, it's easy for me to make a list of anime I hate, but everyone else seems to like, because I, I don't get along well with a lot of mainstream anime, especially the ones the casuals like. Like, right off the top of my head, I could think of quite a few anime I that people like, but I hate. I mean, people like Attack on Titan, I hate Attack on Titan. I think it's one of the most overrated anime ever. People like Sword Art Online, I fucking hate Sword Art Online. That's one of the worst anime ever made, and no one should enjoy it. Because it really is that bad. Um, people like Fate Khaled, I fucking hate Fate Khaled. It's garbage and a disgrace to the, to the entire Fate franchise. People like Dragon Ball Z, I hate Dragon Ball Z. People like Naruto, I don't like Naruto, so on and so forth. People like Mirai Nikki, I think Mirai Nikki is garbage. Oh, Citrus is fucking garbage, and earlier today I was at Barnes & Noble. Not only did I find the Citrus manga, but the Citrus anime as well. Again, you can be as garbage of an anime as you want, as long as you make the main characters lesbians. Again, I, want, I plan on making a video talking about this hypocrisy of the whole... Oh... We love lesbian characters. We love them so much we won't even say when they suck or when their animes suck because Citrus is fucking garbage. Yuri on Ice has more going on than Citrus. And Yuri on Ice is another anime a lot of people seem to like, but I don't like. And no, it's not because it's a yaoi anime. Because I like a lot of trap anime. When I watched Fate Apocrypha, I wanted Estolfo and Sieg to end up together. When I watched Bach and Test, I wanted Yoshi to end up with Hideyoshi. Huh. I've never seen Steins Gate, to be honest. I hear a lot about it, but but whenever I hear about a very mainstream anime that a lot of people like and overhype, I usually approach it with caution because I've been burned one too many times. Yes, if you like Sword Art Online, that is bad. Your ta I question your taste in anime if you like Sword Art Online. Like, if you like it ironically, sure. But if you genuinely like Sword Art Online, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry, Sword Art Online is trash. It really is that bad. Reki Kawahara is a total hack. I've made video after video explaining why Reki Kawahara is a total fucking hack. Huh? Trap on girl action. I always like to tease people by saying, if a girl gets on with a trap, is she a lesbian? I always like to troll people with that. I like trap characters in general. Like, I don't think you have to make all trap characters gay, because not all traps are gay. And I do think that, that people should try to highlight trap characters that are more straight. Because straight traps absolutely do exist. Hell, there are even traps out there that are only attracted to other traps. I have two trap sisters and they admit that they are only attracted to other traps. Like, I know it's fun to meme, but for real, tr like, being a trap does not inherently make you gay, because not all traps are gay. Being a trap is not a sexuality. Trap is a lifestyle. It's not that much different from being a tomboy or something like that. Yeah, sure, you dress and act like a girl, but the only reason why traps 
often end up with guys so often is because they naturally attract guys to them. And some traps go for it, some don't. I mean, I'm a trap, and I go for both teams. I go after both guys and girls. And I've met some girls that have admitted that they would want me to fuck them while in full trap mode. I've met girls that are legitimately attracted to traps. So they're out there. Now sure, do I get more guys that want to come after me than girls? Absolutely. But there are girls out there that are into that, and there are absolutely traps out there that are still into girls, even though they're traps. Honestly, I've, I talked about this in my Myths About Traps video, but to assume that all traps are gay is just absolutely asinine. And I think it's one of those myths that needs to be addressed, because it's absolutely not true. I might cut this off real soon because I'm pretty sure this stream is going on for much longer than I anticipated. Maybe I'll try to get around to, depending on how long it takes me to get around to doing the 12 days of death, maybe I'll get around to doing another live stream. But I know I do like, I do love to interact with my fans. And I know live streams are a very good way to interact with your audience. Which is why I would be interested in doing more. The only reason why I, why I don't do a lot of streaming is because I'm a complete noob when it comes to streaming. I'm not going to lie, I barely have a clue in my head of what I'm doing half the time. I won't lie. So if my streams ever seem shitty to you, make no mistake, I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. And I don't ever pretend to know what the hell I'm doing. My lolly friend is better at streaming than I am. My opinion on role reversal is it can be very cute and sexy. I totally get the whole role reversal thing. I've even, like, teased some girls about doing the whole role, role reversal thing. One thing I've always wanted to do is to pull a whole role reversal on a lesbian. I've always wanted to go full trap mode, find a lesbian, like a full-on lesbian, not a bisexual, and just completely mindfuck her. Yeah, truth be told, I didn't intend for it to be this long. I mean, I just wanted to, like, see what you guys thought of, like, the new microphone and if it sounds good. And yeah, don't worry, I'll check out your comments, and I'll most certainly check your anime list. Maybe one thing I'll do is because Joey did this, and I might be interested in doing it, where he raid, where he gave his opinions on his fans' um, anime lists. And if enough of my fans have a my anime list and they're interested in sending me a link to it, I'll critique their taste in anime and say what I think about it. Although, fair opinion, if your anime taste is shit, I'm going to roast the shit out of you. So if you have shit anime tastes, maybe don't send me your my anime list because I'm certain to roast you. The reason why people are attracted to lollies can vary. Contrary to popular belief, no, a lolly is not simply a child character. Lolly derives from the term lolita. The one of the original lollies, you may not know this, one of the first lollies in fiction is actually the infamous Snow White. Yes, you heard me right, Snow White was a lolly character. In the original, so yeah, the technical term for a lolly, but this gets lost. This has been lost in translation over the decades. The original term of what a lolly meant was it simply meant a young girl with an attraction to people older than them. Basically, lollies are reverse cougars, and there are different types of lollies, just like how there are different types of traps. Yes, there are some lollies that are underage. I won't lie to you. However, there are some lollies 
like legal lollies. That mag girl that I made a response to, she's what is known as a legal lolly. So the attraction to lollies can vary from person to person. What I find appealing about lollies is they're cute. I admire their loyalty. I like their innocence because most lolly characters aren't bitches for the most part, with a couple of exceptions like Kuro, who I've already talked about in a video. Like I said, it depends on the person. Not all person are going to not all people are going to enjoy lollies for the same reason that everyone else will. Just like how not everyone is going to enjoy traps for the same reason. So it really depends. However, I do think that the stigma towards lollies is a little bit over the top and is a little bit ridiculous at times. Assuming that all lollies are underage child characters is just as absurd as assuming that all traps are gay. It's ridiculous. Like, you people always want to play this whole hashtag not all. Well, guess what? Not all traps are gay and not all lollies are underage characters. Please get that through your thick skull. For example, Elia from the Fate series who I mentioned, she's a lolly character and she's 18. Elia, she's older than Rin. Well, I'm from the whole Flat is Justice Club, and before anyone even tries to get the wrong idea, keep in mind I'm bisexual. I think that should be self-explanatory enough. I've just never really found breasts all that attractive. I think they just get in the way, and they're not as satisfying. Honestly, I'm going to tell you this in all honesty. It's far more satisfying to feel up a pair of balls than it is to feel women's breasts. I felt women's breasts. It's not really all that satisfying. A man's testicles is far more soft and tender and satisfying to feel, but maybe that's just me. But I prefer flat chess or really small chess over opi, oh busty girl, or milfs. God, I really don't like milfs. I do not get what the appeal is with milfs. Like, if you've ever seen milfs in real life, they do not look as good as they do in the anime. Anime is lying to you. MILFs do not look that good. Because here's the thing. I'm a trap and I don't even make it look like I have boobs because I'm not interested in having breasts. And if I was born a girl, I would not want to have boobs, or if I did, I'd want to have as small of a chest as possible. I'm just not a big fan of boobs. I don't really find them all that appealing, and I don't get what the big deal is. I felt boobs. I've played around with them. I don't get it. It's not as satisfying. Yeah, I think I might respond to a couple more comments and then I'll probably cut it off. I know I keep saying I'm going to cut it off and then I keep, I keep getting sucked back in. So yeah. So I'll let you guys decide who's going to get the last couple responses or questions before I take off. I promise I'll try to get around to doing another stream where, where I'll be able to just talk to you guys. I, I want to do streams where I bring on guests like what Moeller does. However, the problem I run into with those type of live streams is trying to work around these people's schedule can be a real pain in the ass. I was supposed to have a live stream with a bunch of people from this trap server I'm a part of, but I just wasn't able to get a schedule worked out. But if you are ever interested in being a guest on my live stream, do not hesitate to send me a request. Rather, you're a YouTuber, a subscriber, a friend of mine, I don't care if you're interested in being on, or if you're even interested in having a debate with me, I'll absolutely do it. 
I, I'm all, I, I've been really interested in doing live debates on my channel and having guests on live streams. I'm absolutely interested in doing that. So don't be shy about that. If you've ever wanted to debate me on something or be a guest and talk about something on my live stream, I'll absolutely do it. I wish so badly I could be playing Koyakatsu Party, but I'm not even gonna risk getting in trouble with YouTube. What I would say is if you ever are interested in watching the Koyakatsu Party live streams, I would absolutely recommend making a BitTuber account. I think BitTube is probably where I will be hosting those live streams because you can host 18 plus content there, they don't really care. So that might be where I'll host those live streams when I decide I want to start doing them. So I recommend making a BitTube account and subscribing to my channel. I always leave a link to my BitTube in the description. And I've been, been re-uploading a lot of my videos on there. I haven't gotten them all up there yet because I've made over 100 videos, but I'm working on it. But if you guys don't really have anything else to say, I'll see you guys around next time. I'm going to have a new video up tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the Ascension Rant video. And then after that, I'm probably going to get around to doing all the Death Battle reviews because I got to work really hard to make sure I get each and every Death Battle review out for the 12 days while still giving myself just enough time before Christmas before uploading the top 10 worst death battles. I might need at least a couple days to work on that because I don't want to make any more mistakes. So I'll see you guys around later.